What up, everybody? This is your boy, Black Magus, and it's a work day today. Um, I have to work this Saturday. I need to get a new Bluetooth, by the way. Shout out to the suggestion, um, and I need to look at my comment section to uh, remember who said it. But shout out to the suggestion about the Samsung earbuds, uh, or the Galaxy Buds, as they call them. Um, I know someone who actually has some, and they told me the same things that you did. So both of you guys are probably going to push me towards getting those when I get some money. That's a desire um, purchase for me. Right now, everything's kind of a desire purchase. And God damn it, did another rock hit my wish? Shit. Uh, shows my bad luck. Um, it looks like another rock hit my windshield and put a slight, like, crack in. It's not huge, but it's like a scratch that's very, very noticeable. I have one on the driver's side because I was behind the truck, and I wasn't that close to the truck. I was pretty much like two car lanes behind, but a rock just flew out of that shit and skipped into my window. It wasn't a huge rock, but it's big enough to nick it and scar it up. Uh, as if I don't have enough... Uh, car and other troubles um i guess that's the purpose of this video just like yo apologies for not really putting out the content that i need to um today will be the day that i go ahead i actually have my notes they're on the floor of the car damn and i'm fat and i feel like getting down there this morning um but i had to grab those notes because um some e3 stuff um, i think those are the pc gaming notes i still got to do that ubisoft um, Nintendo and uh, uh, Square Enix, yeah, and then just give my overview of um, E3. Um, when you don't take off E3, you realize like when you're someone who likes to cover these things in a more journalistic way, you need the time off because even the, from home, it's a lot of information to digest, and and you don't take off, and then I have other personal responsibilities. Ah, crazy, but I'm gonna have to invest time. Um, and all those things more. I really just have an issue. Like I let all the problems and all of the um, priorities, so to speak, take away the fun. Um, doesn't help being broke. Uh, being broke, it sucks. Um, it's sad how much the money influences your activities and your mood in life. Um, now, yeah, so combination of those things it just made me blah, and I don't want to be blah, but I'm trying not to be blah. Um, you know, it's a lot, but you know, deal with it, life. But apologies again. I'm going to have to correct that ASAP for the channel's sake, at least. Um, new podcast for the reason we're born is finally up. Um, something's up with my rendering because it's. It's going slower than normal and I'm not sure I think it's about time my computer is about I'd say a good oh five six years old um and I haven't upgraded significantly um of late so time to go through um or at least clean clean it out and see I already did the windows um reinstall but just go through the whole system and check the parts and see what I can get recently. Like, make a list. Um, I swear that person left their card uh, in their ATM. Um, I work at a bank, so I notice these things um, sometimes. But, yeah. Um, new PC, definitely. AMD is supposed to be having new news, so that'll be interesting. Um, I was surprised that they didn't really do it at the um, PC gaming show, but more and more E3 um, is definitely becoming less impactful for the new cycle for um, these companies. I think it's a good place um, still for journalists to come and see things and have presentations. Um, I think it's great that they're now allowing fans to come in and to um, enjoy some of this stuff. Um, but as far as like the dominant um, force in video game media, no. Um, Nintendo has definitely 
changed the course of game. It's funny because as innovative as people always say Nintendo is when it comes to hardware and things like that, they're pretty innovative in the media coverage thing because people thought the directs would be kind of a joke type of thing. No, those directs are very, very like good. Um, they're much easier for people to access. They're much more beneficial, I think, um, in the long run, because you can have this quick uh, 15 to 30 minute or hour, however long you can structure it however you want and put what you want in there, give the details that you want in a like more precise manicured way. You don't have to worry about all the moving parts. It's not that much more um it's not that much probably at all for your production as far as um setting up these events because you gotta rent out the space in e3 you gotta like rent out venues like sony think about um what microsoft had to do they had to pay for their space and i used to know the pricing for e3 like depending on how big your floor space is but microsoft usually gets a large floor space and they're in a prominent hall, so you got to pay for that. They have to pay for the venue that they do their um, presentation at, so that's extra cost. You got the production cost of setting up all the camera work, um, you know, uh, getting people to come in board and be presenters, um, you know, moving staff and all that, setting up these video presentations. Like, you're already spending the money on the videos anyway. You could just sit there and package that together in your offices and boom, distribute it. But you know, Microsoft is definitely one of the ones that loves the flair of the thing uh, of E3. So it makes sense why they would stick in. But it's like everybody else is like, we're good. Like, you know, Activision is about to have that Call of Duty thing soon, I'm sure. You know, people who are fans of Call of Duty are going to get that like in the its own individual slice. And they can concentrate and learn exactly what they want about what they want. You know, no 60 uh, CG vignettes, basically. Um, so, you, everything gets its own due. It's just like, the one thing I, oh, I'm still criticized about the Microsoft show uh, from this week is that they had no time for, really, their main thing, which was with their console. Like, at the end, you get this, like, five-minute document er, documentary with the employees talking about how, you know, they've enjoyed working on it, and this, this is going to be so great, and they just love the tech and all that. It's like, people really didn't come here for that. They knew that you had a new console coming out. They wanted to see it and get some more information. Stop with the whole, oh, we got the most teraflops and, you know, this and that. Like, tech speaks good. Tech speaks cool. Tech speak don't relate to everybody. And it's definitely not giving people a clear idea. It's like, yeah, that's cool. You say a lot of big, like, you know, fancy words that'll get some people like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, teraflops and shit. But most of us want more substance and we didn't get any substance. And I think that's the main theme of this whole E3 is like... Some flair, no substance. Um, but I'll uh, elaborate on that in another video. But yeah. Um, Sony made the right move. Um, Nintendo always does their thing. They did it in the treehouse and they made the right move. Again, just do your own thing. Um, you don't really need fucking E3 like that. E3 probably should just trans... Um, should probably go back to the original boring format. So it's just a bunch of press there to just see stuff and relate the news to people um although I, I do like the fact that they let just um regular people in to play on the um the game floor but you know ah e3 is e3 uh whatever um congrats to the toronto raptors by the way uh first title in the nba um now everybody's waiting with the baited uh, breath to see if Kyrie, I'm uh, not Kyrie, shit, Kawhi Leonard is going to actually stay and chill with the franchise. I mean, he can. At this point, 
he could write, write his own paycheck anywhere, to be quite honest, because it's like, yo, I go places and I make championships happen. You know, it may not necessarily be totally true, but that's what the narrative looks like. You know what I mean? It's like, he won in San Antonio. Um, they were one of the better teams. He gets hurt. They become like a mid-tier team. Um, he leaves them, and they're definitely stuck in mid-tier now. Um, he goes to Toronto, who, you know, knocking on the door, couldn't get past LeBron. Um, a lot of people are going to say, yeah, LeBron wasn't there, just standing in their way, so of course. And that could be true. Um, but at the same time, they weren't really doing that much damage um, in the playoffs. I think, in my opinion, I don't think they would have done that much damage to LeBron um, or no LeBron in the team that they had um, before. But they got Kawhi, unfortunately, DeRozan. You know, really good player, but they got that transcendent player in there. So, hey, now they won a championship. So, good for them. Anyway, it's time for me to go to work. So, as always, you guys... Feel free to hit me up. Let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you later. This your boy Black Makers, and I'm out. Deuces.